to Nigeria, and that was broadcast very early this morning. Joining us in our legal studios, it's a pleasure to have Barrister Joe Uwokedi, who is a renowned legal practitioner. Good morning, Barrister Uwokedi. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good to join you. Also, we have Barrister Abbas Ahmed, who is also a renowned legal practitioner. Good morning, Barrister Ahmed. It's been a while good we morning. had you on the show. Good morning. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank gentlemen. For thanks for being around. Now, let us just start by um, asking this first question. Uh, what are your thoughts, Joanna, about the President addressing the nation, specifically after a long time away from um, the country? Uh, well, I think it's just traditional that um, when um, a president of any nation has been away for some time, mm -hmm. or there is an issue for him to address the nation, it's, it's traditional. So he has been away for a long time. There has been so many issues, so many conversations. And now that he's back, I think it's just necessary that he faces the nation so that people will not say this is photo trick. Exactly. That we saw him address us. Mm. And um, he, uh, just to douse the tension in the nation and mm. allow the nation to know I'm back and I intend to go back to my duty post. Exactly. Plus, it will look like he's taking us for granted if he just came in and didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. But then let's look at, you know, the, the situation on ground before he's uh, coming back to the country. It was away for over 100 days. And uh, um, there was a, a bit of unrest, you know, in parts of the country. There were protests that he should resume or resign, you know, uh, and all of that. Now, let's just start folks that with, you know, him coming back in the heat of all of those protests. What is the import of his returning back to Nigeria at this particular time where a lot of people feel that he's, well, to a large extent, incapacitated in terms of handling the affairs of the nation because of his health? Okay. Okay. Uh, for me, um, uh, according to he, uh, what he said, mm. he has it that he is listening to he, the doctor's advice. His medical doctors that uh, have been like, treating him over the years. Mm. Mm. That, but coincidentally, it was at the height of the agitation for his regime or resign or the so-called uh, Mudondu. To protest, yes. Uh, protest and even what actually transpired in London. Mm. Because we really gathered that some persons actually went to the place, I mean, a drill house in London, shouting at him to go back. Yeah. But uh, look at it, um, if you look at it some, some, uh, with some kind of uh, view, you may think that, okay, these um, protests and agitations forced him to come back. Mm. But then we look at it again from the medical perspective, he might have served the required, I mean, period prescribed by the doctor to satisfy him, okay, to come back and resume his duties. Mm -hmm. What I'm just saying is that the, the protest actually also worked mm. because um, we, we need a president, we have a president. It put Although some kind of pressure it put on a him. kind of pressure yeah. and created mm -hmm. a kind of awareness. Even the CNN and the uh, um, BBC mocking Nigeria mm -hmm. and all that. Mm. But the president should come back home and assume duty. Mm -hmm. In as much as we believe and we, we accept the fact that he was voted with the vice president. But he was the major person that people, that, that uh, were presented before to the people during the election. Yeah. That people looked up to mm -hmm. and said, this is our president. Yes. Okay. The other vice president just like, you know, Take care of his duties, his absence, mm -hmm. or duties assigned to him mm -hmm. to, I mean, execute. So even even though we had a, a sitting uh, a acting president, acting president there, still there that, was still a vacuum. That vacuum. Okay. 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 We'll come back to mm. we'll come back to Lagos. Let us quickly uh, get to Iba Don. We are being joined by uh, Comrade Emmanuel Ogundiro, he's the TUC chairman in Oyo State. Uh, good morning to you, Comrade. Uh, I don't know if you followed uh, the president's broadcast, but my question, very first question to you right now. Do you really think the president, in his address, has actually uh, touched on the consent and plight of Nigerians, in your opinion? Okay, I uh, will try and return to Ibadan in a bit. Let me just direct that same question to you now, Dr. Abbas. Uh, the president's broadcast, do you really think it has actually touched on the consent and the plight of Nigerians as we speak right now? There were two things majorly that mm. I took out of his conversation or his address with Nigerians. Okay. He talked about the unity of Nigeria, yes. which is um, one of the major problems that um, you know, erupted in the system in his, during his absence because there was so much agitation for true federalism, um, restructuring, and all exactly. the rest of it. So the unity of Nigeria was under threat, so he addressed that issue. He also addressed the issue of uh, the recurring um, Boko Haram um, bombings and attacks and mm -hmm. all the rest of them. And um, he, he said they were going to re-engineer so that 
the benefit or the gains mm -hmm. of the past 18 months will not be doing it. One other thing that I, I don't know, uh, I didn't quite um, um, see in his yeah. speech was, the honest truth remains that Nigerians are more concerned about the state of the economy. Exactly. Yeah, Nigerians are more concerned with, that, with, with, with the state of the economy. I would have wanted the president to address the issue, to tell Nigerians, we know the pains you are going through, the rest we're assured, working on it. We're on top Something of in that direction. And okay. I guarantee you that sooner right. than later we're going to come out of the woods. Okay. But then let's talk about him addressing, you know, the question of our national unity. There was a place in the speech where he, he said uh, certain comments, especially in the social media, was actually crossing the line. You know, especially those questions that bordered on our uh, being together as one. Do you really think that where people express their thoughts or their emotions regarding whether or not we should be one as a country or not, is that really crossing the line, like the president said? For me, the Constitution gives us um, freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. But there's no expression that is absolute. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, every expression has its exceptions. Generally, you have a right to say whatever you want to say, but you do not libel me, mm -hmm. you do not slander me. Those are exceptions. Okay. So, and um, we must also be students of history. Hate speeches can actually um, lead to war. That was why people were condemning the northern youths for saying the Igbos must lead must the north. Lead that part, yeah. Because there are so many uneducated, unenlightened people that could amplify mm. what ordinarily look like mm. a misunderstanding. Exactly. So that's why hate speeches. Mm. I mean, even in international law, I mean, it can be a crime against humanity. Mm -hmm. If you make a hate speech that leads to genocide, you could... Like we saw in the case of Rwanda. Yeah, that like happened in, in Rwanda. Like Rwanda. Yes, so yes. that was why the president was mm. saying that even in our grievances and agitations and anger, we must have some measure of decorum and decency. You can actually disagree with somebody mm -hmm. vehemently mm -hmm. without necessarily But still stay within the yes, confines of the what's confines acceptable. Of yes. Culture, okay. you know, decency. Mm -hmm. You could disagree with somebody, stand mm -hmm. your ground and say, I won't go this far mm -hmm. without necessarily insulting anybody. Okay. Okay. What they were trying to avoid is any statement that could ignite, you know, war in mm -hmm. a nation. All right, uh, let's see if we can return to Abu, uh, to Ibadan, rather, uh, where Dr. Uh, Comrade Emmanuel Ogudiro is standing by. I don't know if you're ready for us. Uh, let me take it from where uh, Barista Abbas Ahmed uh, stopped as regards uh, what the president said, specifically about uh, being distressed to notice that some of the comments, especially in the social media, have crossed the national red lines by daring to question our collective existence as a nation. Do you think this is a step too far? Uh, are we going to see some sort of regulations on the part of um, or from the federal government as regards uh, comments people make in the nearest future. All right, we seem to be having interconnectivity issue with our studios in Ibadan. Let us stay here in Lagos. Uh, Let's Barista, come back. Uh, okay, do you. okay, do you want to answer that question for us, please? Uh, for, um, we have... Um, fundamental right uh, of uh, freedom of expression and the speech and uh, like my learned colleague has rightly said uh, uh, but the president should come clear as what uh, he refers to as crossing the line mm. because um, there is no effect without a cause and uh, when you allow a problem to linger so much it will metamorphose into greater problems so the issue now is that what are we doing to solve all these problems do people just wake up and start antagonizing themselves. They just wake up and start going to social media to antagonize people, to use hate speeches, to abuse people, I mean, to cause, I mean, a kind of uh, thing that may lead to, to genocide or to massacre or, or war. So, you know, the problem I always have is that addressing the effect without addressing the cause. We have been, I mean, for my years, I've actually existed in Nigeria over a couple of years now. I'm no longer a small boy. And I've never seen a situation where Nigerians came up so hard I mean, on one another, like what we witness, I mean, within a short period of this regime. Mm. So the fundamental question should be like, in as much as we are trying to gag the people, we are trying to like advise the people to exercise caution as regards the way they, they, they vent their anger on social media. Have we ever taken time to study the root causes of all these things? Have we ever taken time to, as a government, to say, okay, have, can we just go home? 
and look inwardly to ascertain what made people to become this aggressive. Mm. Is there a fundamental lacuna? Is there a fundamental gap? Is there a fundamental issue that we have not addressed? Naturally, made these people to become this bold and this, I mean, this, this, I mean, this daring. If I so were to ask you, Barista Wokedi, what would you say is the fundamental issue that has, that has been left unaddressed? That is why the, 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 the government should engage the people. You know, you know, sometimes when I look at, uh, the, I, I mean, I, I even thought it this morning that we have, we have to exercise caution mm. as bringing in another general as Nigerian president. Mm. I don't think that is ideal. Mm. Uh, in my own opinion, mm. I don't think that is ideal. Because if you look at what actually transpired, let, for instance, the vice, the acting president, the vice president, like what happened in Anambra or, Kuzu, or Ozubulu massacre. Ozubulu, yeah. He sent five ministers there. Mm -hmm. They talked to, they didn't resurrect those, but they didn't bring them back to life. They didn't give, I didn't even hear that they gave them anything. But then when they looked at, assessed the situation. And empathized. Empathized with them. Okay. Studied what actually transpired uh -huh. there. And then talked to them. Mm. And cautioned about I mean, the people felt them. Mm. So this is a way of engaging the people. Mm. So when something is happening somewhere, try to find a way to engage the people. That's why it is democratic system. Mm. Talk to them, know what their grievances are, address them. So you are saying the, the government should, should get, closer, get to closer to the people so that they can test their post. Okay. Some people right. may be out of ignorance. Mm. Some people may be asking what the government cannot afford mm. or what are not. I mean, I because they, they don't, don't know. Because they don't know. Exactly. They want to All right, Barista Abbas, you want to say something? I that issue. You asked a question. <laughs> you said what is fundamentally totally wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. And we do not need to go to Harvard <laughs> to find out what is wrong. Nigeria has failed its people. The leadership class in Nigeria has failed its people. After trillions of dollars, 80% of your people, of Nigerian people, are living below poverty line. Mm. It's a crisis of leadership. It's a moral crisis. The nation has failed Nigerians. And that's why, I, analogically, I said Nigeria is like a patient that has suffered the, most, the misfortune of being attended to by incompetent doctors who have conducted operation on them and forgotten surgical equipment in their body over a long period of time. More like they've been used as a guinea pig. Yeah, okay. so those, mm. those, those, those equipment, surgical equipment, <laughs> now are affecting the body organ and the patients are crying. Mm. And the, the president himself needs to be empathic, needs to be empathic with the Nigerians because they are living below poverty line in spite of humongous resource. We keep promising them budget of transformation, budget of consolidation, budget of, budget of transfiguration, change. budget of change, budget of everything. Mm. At the end of the day, the Bureau of Statistics and Central Bank will reel out data saying this is our achievement, this is our achievement. You go to the street and ask of an average Nigerian, no impact what have you benefited? On, mm. Nigerians don't okay. have anything to benefit. Our leaders are buying private jets. They are buying houses in in expensive islands all over the world, sending their children to school. You go to our medical facilities. If you don't have money, you are likely going to die from malaria ailment. Oh. The roads are not good. People buy three, four generators in their house. You drill bore hole, oh. you set up school. You are your own government. The nation has failed okay. Nigerians, and okay. that's the pain. Okay. Okay, let, let, let me ask one more question. The president said a whole lot of things in his speech, talked about economic security, political e evolution, and integration. But the question right now is uh, what are the hardline actions uh, the president should be saying as regards the restructuring that people have been talking about? He hasn't even addressed that issue of restructure. Mm. He, he carefully skipped it. And uh, I mean, these are the uh, reasons why people keep on abusing, abusing one another, abusing themselves. Because when you, when you willfully abandon a fund, an, an issue that actually generated so much controversy, so much crisis, so much, I mean, uh, uh, noise in the outcry. system, outcry in the yes. system, mm. and you came in as a president, you never bothered to touch on that area. Mm. So what do you think that people do? People don't bottle up their anger and they go home and rest? No! They'll find another way to like exhibit whatever grievance they have as regards that issue. So the issue of restructuring, people came up, people were like, Look, the nation must be restructured. You can't keep doing something over and over and expecting a different result. That's, 
the zest of defining madness. Mm -hmm. We have been running this country over the years. We have been making promises. We have been bringing up budgets. We have been bringing up so many, I mean, so many, I don't know how to even have appellations. So many names of governments who come up with hope, government of transmission of this. And at the end of the day, we are having the same <coughs> challenge. We are having the same mm -hmm. crisis. Mm -hmm. Then the president should, I mean, think outside the box. Review this, the, the, the situation. Review the system. And review our own pr uh, pr uh, procedure of engagement. How are we engaging, engaging the people? How are we even, the government, is the government even engaging even, even, even his own okay. team? All right, but now, Mr. Wokedi, I see you're, you're very passionate about no, no. active participation yes, and the issue of the that citizens in government. Yes, okay. this issue of restructuring. Mm. Are you actually administering people based on what you decide? What you feel? Are, or what you feel? Mm. Okay. Are you administering people based on the popular opinion of the people? What people desire? Mm. I mean, we borrowed our democracy from Western world, from America and the rest of them. Whenever they, they, they have popular opinion of people, it will either shape the way they vote, which will shape the way the government will, will, will go. Mm -hmm. The government is so that when they needed a change from Bush and, 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 their, and, and his ilks, their opinion changed, mm. and Obama came in, the politics changed, the policies changed, everything changed, America changed. Mm. At the point they were like almost fed up with the, this kind of Obama system. Mm. They said, okay, once we want to claim our so and so, the opinion and of the Trump, the Trump administration. So okay. government must flow with the opinion of people, of not people. suppressing or imposing, or imposing your own, on the I mean, people. Your, okay. All right. Let, let, let's bring Mr. Abbas into the discussion again. Now, let's look at this man, you know, President Muhammad Buhari himself. Um, he, he, he is a man that got popular votes of the people. Uh, people loved him, you know, even from the point of campaigning before he became president. They saw him as maybe the answer to a lot of Nigeria's problems. Uh, he went away on medical leave for days and even amidst the protests that he should resign, a lot of people still came out in support of him, which says a lot. Him coming back to the country, we saw the mammoth crowd, you know, that welcomed him. It shows a lot that people still have so much love uh, for this man, Buhari. Even in the midst of, well, the alleged inactivity or non-productivity of the APC, you know, and his government and all of that. Do you still think that Buhari can still achieve that level of success that the majority of Nigerians think that he can, he, even at this he, point in time? He, he, he can, but it depends on several factors. One of them is the creativity that he brings into governance in conjunction with his team. Let me tell you honestly. It look, governing a nation, especially a nation that is wallowing in abject poverty for a very long time, you must be intellectually resourceful because it will require intellectual navigation. And you must also have boundless energy because it's like, it's like a nation that is stuck. You know, it's like when you, a trailer is, has broken down, mm -hmm. And you want to tow the trailer, and you don't have a towing vehicle. You are trying to tow a trailer with bare hand, By manually. Hand. Mm. You are going to run into crisis. That's exactly. Nigeria is at a standstill because the honest truth is that we, are not, we have not been making progress in the past few years. That's the honest truth. If anybody tell you, those people who are making progress are the looters. I have said it on several platforms. We have just two ethnic groups in Nigeria, the looters and the looted. Those that have made so much progress in the past few years are the likes of Desiani. Mm. Those in the corridors of power, those who are buying yachts and buying, the, I mean, apartments all over the world. The Nigerian people have never benefited from any, for whatever be the progress that the term is for the, just for the elites. Nigerians have actually not benefited. So he can make progress, but it will require the infusion of people of not just bright mind, but people with boundless energy because the engagement he's talking about is that, look, when a patient is at the point of death or suffering a terminal ailment, mm -hmm. the body language of his medical doctor will elicit two kinds of prayer. If the patient is sensing, even in a state of death, mm -hmm. that my doctors are doing everything possible, mm -hmm. going about it in such a serious manner, mm -hmm. the prayer that that man will be praying is, God, help me, I don't want to die, my doctors are doing their best. Mm -hmm. But there is a way you will sit. So, so, so incompetent that the patient will just look at it and say, God, I think I would rather prefer to die because this pain 
is too much. My doctors, I don't even see this guy as having the capacity. So because the function of leadership is that even when you are facing the Red Sea, you must have the capacity to inspire confidence in your people. In your people. Your statements will be such that the people will know that in spite of the Red Sea, will okay. cross over. You know to why I side. asked that question yes. about the people still reposing so much uh, trust in the president? Yeah. Because let us not forget that up till now, the uh, actual ailment the president is suffering from is still shrouded in secrecy. Oh, yes, we yes. don't know. So we don't know whether it is yet Uhuru for us as a people, or maybe there'll be a relapse. We don't pray for it, but then anything can happen. So do we still have like a time bomb on our hands? That's what I'm asking. No, really. no, 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 no. Mm. I do not think so. I, I, I think the managers of the, the business um, 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 uh, um, uh, media, the mm -hmm. media guys, where they, they mismanage the information. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in a president being sick. Of course. If you are sick, whether terminal ailment, whether it is heart transplant or anything, there's nothing stopping you is. from addressing the nation. Exactly. And say, Look, my doctors to just told me are. I'm suffering from so so and so. Mm -hmm. I'm going in for surgery. Please mm -hmm. pray along with me. Full it does it. Mm -hmm. Yes, full disclosure. But this was it, not it, done. It, it brings you know the people will be compassionate enough to pray for them, for right. their leaders. Okay, let's let's go to Abuja now. We have. Uh, uh, Yusuf uh, Shamsu, the Senior Program Officer, Center for Democracy and Development, joining us right now. All right, uh, many thanks for joining us on Galaxy today. We are looking at Buhari's return, his speech, and the matters arising. Let us just take a look at it retrospect. In your opinion, how well would you say the federal government has fared uh, since the president has been away uh, in the wake of um, the acting president? Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if he's still acting right now, Professor. <laughs> he's Daniel the vice Ricardo. president. He's, uh, because he has not handed um, the president handed has not handed the letter over yes. to the National mm -hmm. Assembly. So right now he's still an acting capacity. Mm -hmm. How would you say the, uh, the federal government has fared so far, all this while the president has been away? Um, thanks for having me on this program. I, I, I think the most important thing that we need to acknowledge is to say that uh, um, the administration, the administration tries as much as possible not to leave any gap uh, in, in terms of governance. But most important, the most important thing is that uh, there is no way you can actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there is no way you can actually say that uh, there is no gap in the administration. Uh, one of the key examples is that um, uh, this uh, recent controversy between the the, the speak uh, the special advisors of the vice president of social media, Lao Luakonde, as well as Shil Gaba, all these Twitter conversation about um, the confirmation of the, from, of uh, people, two persons from the historical position. And uh, it was in the long run later that we realized that there are actually, you know, appointment of uh, people for ministerial position, and uh, which later also took few weeks before these people were given their respective portfolio. So uh, that's a clear example that uh, as much as we think that they uh, they, they, there is no gap or lacuna in the administration, most fundamental thing is that the policies around people who uh, exhibit power and ensure that governance Go, go on smoothly uh, would also prof provide a, a whole lot of, uh, you know, ensure that there's a low pace in terms of policy formulation, in terms of taking uh, pro proactive actions towards ensuring that things work out effectively uh, as it should be. So uh, in the last few months, we can, uh, from that point of view, we can actually say that the, have they been the, the president has been in the country without moving out of the country for one or three days. Um, some of the things that we've seen now happening, better of that would have happened. Well, you know, uh, Shams uh, uh, one of the points raised by the president in his speech today was that of um, the social media going too far. Do you think what he said is actually a direct attack? Um, on the way of stifling the social media and people from making comment as regards their national issues. You know, one, one thing we need to understand is social media is just a tool of exhibiting, of expressing what we think about government. And uh, now we shouldn't see it as, a means, uh, as the end in itself, but rather a means to an end. And one of the 
fundamental thing that social media has been able to do for Nigerians in recent time is it gives Nigerians opportunity to say what they need to do. That freedom uh, is being expressed, and uh, we, which I think is one of the uh, beauties of democracy. You know, when we talk about demo democratic strengthening, one of the key things that we look out for is to what extent have people been able to make their opinion or perspective heard about what government is doing. So, uh, um, um, uh, whether the social media has been awash with a lot of uh, you know, things that the government is not too open to, I, I think it's also a means to also tell the administration that these are these things that you're doing wrongly and we need things to be, to, to be done correctly. One of the key things, problems that I have with social media actually is that sometimes people criticize but not preferring solution. That's the area at which I don't really, uh, you know, I, 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 I you know, uh, really uh, agree with some of the people who use social media. But for the Mentally, uh, is actually a tool that's effectively been used to have a communication with the administration. So uh, people have the right, a lot of people express anger, particularly in the area of the moral justification for the administration to say that uh, for the president going out of the country for over 100 days, whereas uh, last year there was this whole conversation about uh, the, the, the amount allocated to state on state out hospital, which in total is more than the total allocation to general hospitals. And the excuse given by Gary at that time was that, look, they are making this provision because it's not only meant for presidency, but also fundamentally for other people. And also that they, they make such provision to equip state house hospital uh, um, with modern day medical equipment. So if that has been done, I don't see any reason why the administration needs to go out for several days. And you know, the old politicking that I mentioned earlier also is something that is of major concern to people. So social media is just a platform for people to express their concerns about what is happening. Mr. Yusuf, let me quickly ask you before we let you go. As a citizen of Nigeria, you feel the pinch, you feel what is going on economically and also security-wise. What are the immediate things that you think the president, upon returning to the country, should begin doing now? Yeah, it, it, I, I think the first thing, I just to make reference to, uh, I, I think a few weeks ago, the statement made by uh, the, the, the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Emifile, saying that we may not get out of this recession um, until, let's say, first quarter of next year. I, I, I think that is ridiculous. It also shows that the several social economy policies that the government has been formulating and implementing are not working. And government needs at this moment to have a rethink about their strategies towards addressing economic challenges. Government in March or February this year launched the EGP um, Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. And I'm sure a lot of things would have been put into that with a lot of services that government has been amplifying that they record, they've recorded in the area of agricultural intervention. I, I think government needs to do a whole lot of things, particularly in the area of reviving this economy, and most fundamentally to address the food insecurity that we've been experiencing for several months. I, I remember that sometime, a few months ago, government um, um, <clears throat> set up a tax force that is meant to look into the food insecurity that is happening in the country. But we've not had anything aside for the setting up. We don't know what they are doing. Government also needs to critically look into that to ensure that because uh, staple goods, the price, uh, staple crops or goods, the price are going up on a, on, a, on a daily basis in the market, which are these things that an average poor person in Nigeria have access to and can't consume for them to say that they have they have standard of living. So most fundamentally, uh, government needs to find a way around it. And uh, second, uh, another area which I think government needs to look into is the area of health. Um, government promised to reconstruct 10,000 public health centers. And uh, I, I've not seen them doing anything. I, I've not seen them doing even up to 50. Uh, the only one that the pictures are everywhere is the one in Abuja. The rest, I don't know. Government needs to find a whole lot of things to do in the area of education as well as the health. Because government cannot say that they, one of the key priorities is to revive the economy without you know, devising proactive and uh, effective policies that could ensure the growth in those sectors, which I think they are very fundamental.
All right, I want to say um, thank you to Yusuf Shamsuddin so for joining us. I was still looking at um, the president's speech and we we're trying to analyze it, but we'll take a quick break. Let's see how uh, some governors have reacted concerning um, Buhari's return. We'll be right back. Stay with us. God for this moment. Um, this is a moment that Nigerians are waiting for over 90 days. And uh, we as a governors that uh, pay a visit to Mr. President the last couple of weeks, what we saw is a pressure and we reported to Nigerians. And today, Nigerians will see and so what we have all the press to them. So this is a happy moment to us. And uh, we continue for Almighty God to give the president uh, good health that you continue to manage and run to Nigeria as suspected by Nigerians. Nigerians are happy. We are happy. Almost everybody is happy to see him back. You know, when we as governors, we visited him, we reported back that he was feeling much better and he would soon come back. And today, we can say that scene is believing because he's coming now. So it will improve the socio-economic uh, position of the country because the number one decision maker is now around. He and his deputy will take a decision together and you will see there's improvement. There will be things will be done at a much uh, quicker way than before. I, I, I urge all Nigerians to feel as elated as uh, I am feeling uh, for the simple reason that uh, our president has been away for quite some time. As a human being, he's been afflicted with sickness. Uh, God, in his infinite mercy, has given him back his health. And uh, he is coming back to take over the ship of state and continue tearing the ship of state out of uh, troubled waters. So it's a great day for Nigeria. Well, I think this is um, uh, good news for all Nigerians and for everyone here that the president has finally arrived this country to resume duties. Uh, this will have uh, closed the chapter of all kinds of speculations and, and uh, the different uh, views being expressed about his health. Uh, but we must know that every man will want to get sick. And what we pray is that people should get better when they get sick. Uh, Mr. President is, has come back to resume work. And uh, I think uh, uh, he has had enough time to look at issues concerning Nigeria because sometimes as a leader, as a president or governor, when you go outside your state or country, you have better time to refresh on many issues. So I think his coming back will be full of action. It should be action packed and I think uh, Nigeria will uh, hear him speak because so much expectations from Nigeria. Nigeria wants to know what new can their president uh, tell them. They want to know the way forward, what next, how do they move on issues. So um, I think his Monday address will, uh, will show the new direction as to what Nigerians are expecting of him as a president. <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome back. back. Your your us, uh, it's still Galaxy. Today we are looking at uh, the president's return and, of course, uh, his um, speech uh, that was broadcast earlier today. Uh, we are taking the conversation straight now to Abuja, Comrade Ibadon. Emmanuel. Ibadon, rather. Uh, uh, Comrade Emmanuel Ogudiro is still standing by. He's the TUC chairman in New York State. Uh, many thanks for joining us, Mr. Ogudiro. Uh, very quickly, I just want to get your quick analysis as regards uh, the president's speech uh, that he made earlier today. Thank you very much. Um, we finally have Mr. President back in the country. And from the speech, you know, his speech, one good thing about the speech is that it was very brisk and businesslike. You see that he first dealt with security. Those who are was a way they can behave and do what they like. He said it when he came on board. He actually appreciated them for at least those who lost patience with him. But that does not give them the liberty to do what they like. 
He had preached that he would use the last of his blood to maintain, to maintain this structure called Nigeria. Um, he, he also said that people who thought that the financial burden of his sickness would be born on the country. He has allayed that. Latter part of his speech, he borrowed. He borrowed the language. Our mumu don't do. Fine. He also appreciated the fact that our mumu don't do. He had enumerated series of things that will be done now to restructure this country. I'm very happy about that paragraph of his speech, that the country is to be restructured. They are going to All right, uh, our apologies. I'm afraid that as much as we can take from Let's our studios in not cooperating. Ibadan, yes, yeah, so let us just conclude right. here with our back. guests Mumu in Dundu. Lagos. Okay, we're talking about our Mumu Dondo. Let us even yes, stay there for a bit. Uh, do you really think um, all the protests and counter protests actually put pay to the president and return right now? Of course. Of course, they had um, effects on them. Um, at least they created awareness, enough awareness. Although, like I said, if the president is in coma, even if people like, let him protest from here to, to London, he will not come back. The fact is that um, his health condition has actually improved. Because if he's not um, physically fit to return to Nigeria, uh, maybe it's in a lifeline or things like that, um, uh, at, at least one of the versions of the protest, resign or re re resume or resign, he would have been forced to resign. But he's able to be here because his, his physical fitness allowed him to do that. And the protest also mounted pressure on the president and the people managing his house. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, I cannot say our um, Mudondu was actually a failure. They elicited a kind of um, a, a, a excitement, a kind of a concern, a kind of a um, how do I put it? A, a, a kind of attention. Yeah, towards, some sort of towards, urgency. Yeah, towards the president. Returning. Because yeah. at the point who, who people relax, yeah. who believe it is, it, it, it is normal, you know, people, people kept giving off excuses and then people kept visiting London, trooping to London, as London has become the capital of Nigeria instead of Abuja. And coming up with so many news, so many kind of uh, stories, so many uh, funny pictures and uh, mm -hmm. things like that. I mm -hmm. know this era of. Uh, uh, photoshopping, uh, <laughs> people can disbelieve anything mm -hmm. because, however, you prove to people that this is the recent picture of the president, they may still doubt. They always point, point something out. Points yes. as, okay, it was 2013, okay. yeah. 2012, mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, protests should be encouraged, and people should know that you don't just um, intimidate people, you don't just harass people because they are protesting. Protesters are the easiest way of expressing, I mean, political grievance without committing any offense, without carrying arms. Without shooting people, other persons may decide to, like uh, Boko Haram, they, they are expressing their grievance. But we have seen the way they are, they are going yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. Some of that military say <coughs> people like them, in Niger, some of them were mm -hmm. like burning the, pipe, the pipes and other things as a way of expressing their own grievance. The protesters are the only people that when they come out to express their grievance, they're only calling the attention of people. Look at what you are saying. Look at what should be done. They don't carry arms. They don't destroy things. They don't, they don't, they don't name people. So why attacking them? Why can't you look at their message? Why can't you, why can't you assess their message? And know that what, what, what they're saying is for the interest of the people. Why can't you look at it? Why can't you examine it? Okay. Why can't you move in that dimension <coughs> instead of trying to like force them into submission? For me, okay. I, 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 I was highly embittered when, when they attacked that uh, 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 regime or resign and moved on to. You don't just do that. I don't just uh, 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 raise kangaroo kind of uh, protest to go and counter under protest. Allow people to protest. If they have genuine grievance, that is essence of that is beauty of democracy. Let them go all out. Give them police protection. Mm -hmm. Make sure they don't they, they don't uh, generate into destruction of properties or making of life. After they are they are done with their protest, look at the message they have conveyed, mm -hmm. and then use that message to work. Okay. And society, a better society will evolve. Mm -hmm. All right, Barista Abbas. Now the president also talked about political integration 
and political evolution. Now, looking at our political landscape, you know, with what we've been seeing with APC, PDP, even with the humongous level of illiteracy amongst the electorate and also voters' apathy that we saw in the uh, recent uh, Lagos State uh, uh, elections and all of that. Putting all of that together, do you really think, politically speaking, we're mature enough, you know, uh, for what the president was talking about? Can we achieve it? You see, in an art, a democracy cannot thrive in an atmosphere of um, illiteracy and poverty. Mm. It can't. So as you are trying to evolve, you know, a highly sophisticated political system, you must address the issue of people's education and their economic background. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the distortions we have in our political system, the political corruption of politicians bribing voters and all the rest of them, you look at it now, it's a function of illiteracy, it's a function of poverty. ignorance, mm. and it's a function of poverty mm. because in some, in some environment, in some mm. rural areas, 1,000 naira to some, some family mm. can actually feed them for the next one week. They mm. will cook soup, they will eat. I mean, so except you empower people to have the capacity to to take rational decision. Like, let me just give you a typical example. The last election, mm -hmm. I registered far away from my house because when I was trying to register during the course of registration, the environment, I mean, my play, I mean, there was always, I'm, I'm not always at home. Mm -hmm. By the time I rush home, it's either the queue is too long. So, but I was fortunate in front of my office, the, there were no queue. So I had to register. So okay. during the election, because of no movement, I had to sleep overnight, hmm. twice. I spent 36,000 naira sleeping in a nearby hotel to be able to vote. 36,000 naira, which of the political party can afford to give all the voters 36,000 naira to go and vote, apart mm. from the 2,200, 500 they can't afford. Mm. But you see, what it gave me, it gave me the independence to be able to, you know, analyze the candidate. Mm. And so I actually crisscross, uh, you know, crisscross, uh, crisscross parties. I look at the presidential candidates, and I think this guy looks like somebody that represents the kind of a change I want or the kind of a society I want, I voted for him. And when he came for the governorship, I also look at the parties. I say, which one looks responsible out of these two candidates? Mm. And I voted for a party of my mm. choice. When it was House of Red, mm. I also voted. Nobody was watching so you over. you had the power yes, of nobody choice. Was, nobody was watching over exactly. my head to say, oh, I'm giving you 1,000, you must vote. So yeah. until you economically empower it. Because the, the, the basic problem of our politics today is that the people are so impoverished. Exactly. And the political elites, they know. So what they do is that they take a bag of rice to a community to about 200 persons. Mm. Which of the party will come to my house and say, I'm giving you a bag of rice, please go and vote for us. I'll simply look at him and say, you must be an idiot. You are simply insulting my interest. So we must address the issue of the education of the people. Mm -hmm. How important it is. You know, I read in history, they said when America was involved in the National Congress, there was a time there was a debate between Spanish and English language, which should actually be their lingua franca. Mm -hmm. And the cause of the debate, English won by one vote. That's a historical... Um, uh, you can see how one vote can actually make a historical difference. Mm. So if two of the English-speaking persons had actually slept at home, maybe they would have been speaking Spanish. So I'm conscious of that fact that my one vote will constantly Goes make a long it. Way. I will never sleep over my right. No matter, even if I have to swim across the Atlantic Ocean, mm. I will always go to vote. Because one day, one day, my vote will always make a difference. Mm. All right, uh, we okay. are actually out of time. I don't know if I can just chip in one more question. Um, the Abuja, okay. I guess in Abuja talks about the way forward, what the president should be doing at the moment. Uh, in 30 seconds, can you Quickly. just tell us what the main issues to be addressed uh -huh. are? The president should um, address issues concerning the economy. Like we have been discussing here that um, you told us this, you told us that average man in the street wants to feel the impact of the economy. Yeah. They want to feel the impact of billions and millions and trillions of dollars and naira or whatever you are spending on infrastructure on this. We want to see, they want to see it in the market value. They want to see it in the payment of school fees. Yeah. They want to see it in the salary structure of the people. They want to see it in every day-to-day -day activities of the people. So, I mean, security is good. Uh, um, in, in terms of uh, securing the people and all that and the uh, indivisibility of Nigeria, which has always been a question. Because in every society, you must have to address issues. Mm. If it were, uh, uh, America has only one concern for how many years, but they keep on revisiting issues, revisiting issues until they metamorphose into the kind of okay, society they are okay, So, the, so I think for you. All the, right. the president should look in the direction of the economy. The economy. Okay. Okay. Economy. Uh, 
for me, mm. <laughs> the aircraft called Nigeria yeah. is finding it difficult maintaining stability. Like an aircraft, we need to land safely and fix the problem before we can take off and fly as a nation. We require restructuring. Mm. And the leaders should listen to the voice of Dyson, sit down and see how we can correct the ills in the society. And that is the only way we can fly. You can't fly with one, air, uh, one, one engine. Mm. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank, thank you, gentlemen. gentlemen. Uh, thanks go, uh, to uh, Joe Woke, the legal practitioner, and of course, um, Abbas Ahmed. Also, legal thank you thank for you coming on the it's show. A pleasure. Yeah. And also joined us, uh, Mr. Yusuf Shams Shamsuddin, who is Senior Program Officer, Center for Democracy and Development, joined us from Abuja. And we had for a bit, comrade Emmanuel Ogudiro, uh, TUC chairman of your state, even though Network did not permit us to uh, have a lot of our <laughs> views. But that's the show for today. Thank you for joining us. We are all excited that after over 100 days, the president has returned to the country. But Nigerians, we all should keep praying that this country does get better. All right, Thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for watching. Let me just start quickly with this one from Dasio Vashegu. He says, I think those uh, who were expecting PMB to make economic or security statements are missing it. PMB to me spoke today not in the capacity of the president. Remember, he has not transmitted any letter to the National Assembly to ask for transfer of power back to him. This clearly shows that he is okay. All right, that's our show for today. I am Justin Akademi. Many thanks.